What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and to another weekly 3D model. This week, we're back with another explosive device. This one's based off of a concept from the video game Alien Isolation, and I just decided to change a few things up along the way. So without further ado, let's just get started. All right, so for the liquor bottle, I decided to go with Jack Daniels. Now, usually with these videos, I just wing the models and the proportions and all that along the way, but just because this is specifically modeled after a Jack Daniels bottle, this time we're gonna use an image plane. So to do this, we're gonna go to our front facing camera view, and then in the top left corner, we're gonna go up to view and down to image plane, and then we can import an image. Now, I found this image on Google Images, but you can use whatever you like. It's not exactly orthographic, but it's somewhat front facing, so this is gonna be good enough. So once that image is loaded in, we're just gonna scale that up into the center of our screen, and then we can start blocking out our model based on that photo. So I'm gonna go select the cube, and then we can start blocking out that main bottle shape. Now I'm just gonna drag that image plane a little in front of my object, and I'm also gonna drag down that alpha gain slider so I can make the image see-through. It's just gonna help me model the shape and I can see exactly how my model's coming together. So we're just gonna start off by deleting the top and bottom faces on this cube, and then I can start extruding those edges, just basically blocking everything out, keeping it in really low polys. Now I'm not gonna worry about getting this Jack Daniels bottle 100% accurate to its real life proportions. I don't have any measurements or dimensions, schematics or anything like that. We're just gonna use this as a rough guide. So I'm not gonna stress too much about getting it exactly perfect. We're just gonna roughly block it out based on this photo. So let's just continue blocking the shape out. So right here near the top at the neck of the bottle, I need to make all those edges round. So we're simply just gonna double click all of those edges and go hit circularize. Then I'm gonna add some bevels. So if you look at the reference photo, you'll see that there's eight hard edges on the neck of the bottle. It's a little different than the bottom base. So to make my life easier, I'm just gonna separate these two objects. So I'm gonna create a separate object for the neck that has exactly eight hard edges so I can line those up with my reference. And once that's in place, I can bridge and merge those two objects together to create my full bottle shape.
All right, so once I'm happy with those two shapes, I can go ahead and combine them together, and then I can double click both those edges and bridge them. Then all I have to do is hit three on my keyboard, smooth it out, and I can take a look and see how things are looking. So things are looking good, so we can go ahead and finish closing off the top of the bottle. And then on the very bottom of the base, we're not going to see too much of this, but it is going to be a little transparent and see-through in Substance Painter. So why not create that bump or that little bubble that's in the very bottom of the base. Alright, so really quickly before we move on, I'm just going to tweak a few things, especially where that transition is between that neck and the base of the bottle, and then we can move on to a few other things. One thing I actually forgot to do was add that bump or extrusion at the very top of the bottle. So we're really quickly gonna add a few edge loops and I can select those faces and extrude them. Alright, so our bottle shape is looking pretty good. Now you could spend some more time tweaking things and getting it to look a little bit more accurate to that Jack Daniels bottle, but it's looking good enough for me, so we're going to move on to a few more exciting things like the explosive device. So to start this one off, we're going to select another cube and we can start blocking out that main explosive shape. Now once again, I was using that photo from the Alien Isolation as my main reference, but I wasn't worrying about getting it exactly like the one in the photo, so we're just going to use it as a little bit of a guidance. So I'm going to start by adding a few edge loops, and then we can select those outside corners and extrude them. Now the quickest way to do this would just be adjusting that thickness value after you extrude it on the right, but I didn't really know if I wanted to follow the reference photo exactly, so I was just playing around with the shape a little bit. And then I'm going to add a few extra edge loops to help support those hard edges. That way when I hit three on my keyboard, I can smooth this object out and see how things are looking.
And once I'm happy with that main shape, I can go ahead and duplicate it, squish it nice and small, and I can use that as the top and the bottom part of my explosive device. Alright, so next up was making a little screw for the top of my explosive. So to do this, we're going to create a cylinder, and I can drag down those subdivisions so it's only 8 sided. My plan was to boolean out a little square in the top of the shape, and I always find working with booleans, it's easier working with lower polys. So for the boolean itself, we're going to create a small cube, I can position that near the top of my cylinder, and I can go ahead and boolean out a small hole. I just need to remember to go in afterwards with the multi-cut tool and connect all of the other vertices. Once those are all connected, I can go ahead and bevel out some of these edges. And then finally, I can hit 3 on my keyboard and smooth the object out and see how everything is looking. Now it looks like a top of a little screw, so now we can scale that down and position that on the top of our explosive. Alright, so I thought we would really quickly just UV this shape before duplicating it a bunch of times. So I'm just going to open up my UV editor and I can go ahead up to mesh and go smooth out my object. Now I'm just going to bring up my divisions up to two. I want to have a really smooth object on those edges. But as you can see, it added a lot of unnecessary polys to the shape. So what I'm going to do is zoom in and start double clicking some of those edges I don't need and I can just remove them. Alright, and then once I'm happy with the shape, I can go ahead, delete history, center pivot, and freeze transformations, and I can go up to UV and camera base to do a camera base projection and remove all the cuts on the model, and then I can just control U and control L to unfold it and lay it out in my UV editor. Because of the shape, I don't need to add any extra cuts into the model, and I'm not going to get any weird stretching, so just unfolding the shape as is is going to work. So now I can go ahead and duplicate this screw a few more times to place them on the other corners of my model. Alright, so next up were those two little metal pieces that sit on top that the wires come out of. So very similar to the screws, we're going to create another cylinder. I'm just going to add a few edge loops depending on how many teeth or little rivets we want on the outside of that little object. And then I can go ahead and extrude those faces and start beveling some of those edges. Alright great, so those are looking good. Next up is that tiny little handle that sits on the explosive. So we're going to create another small cube. I can delete those outside faces and start extruding them just to give it a little shape like a small handle.
All right, so next up is creating the antenna. Now this is gonna sit on the side of my object, so we're gonna create another small cylinder, scale that down to fit into place. I'm gonna use one cylinder to act as if some little extension or little extrusion on the side of my case. And then I'm gonna duplicate that same object over to create my antenna. All I'm gonna do here is add two edge loops, and then I can select some of those top faces and extrude them to create my antenna shape. I'm just gonna make sure I hit circularize on the extrusion, that way it's going to be nice and round and not going to be square. I just need to make sure that I add in a few extra edge loops before I hit circularize. That way that tool has a few extra polys to work with and it can give you a nice circle shape. Alright, so our antenna is done. Next up is moving on to the batteries. So we're going to create a few cylinders for those main battery shapes, and then I can create another small cube for the case that sits around it. So let's go ahead and start blocking out those shapes.
Alright, so now that we have our battery pack all blocked out, let's go ahead and select all of those hard edges and we can give them a small bevel. Alright, so our battery pack is all wrapped up, we're just going to fit that into place and then we can move on to those small little metal pieces that are going to be strapped on the side of our bottle. These are another component to this explosive device, they're going to be attached by a few wires. So let's create another small cylinder and then we can fit those into place. And once again, all I'm going to be doing here is just adding a few edge loops and extruding some of those faces. Alright, great, so those two little metal tips are in place. Now, I quickly looked back at that original reference photo we were using and I saw there was a small extrusion on the battery pack to help hold those batteries in. And I actually like that idea. So we're gonna copy that and do the exact same thing. So I'm gonna go back to my battery pack. I'm gonna add a few edge loops and I can extrude some of those faces to have a small little curve that helps hold those batteries in. Alright, so that's looking much better, so let's zoom back out we can just adjust a few small things. Alright, so next up is creating all of those wires. So to do this, we're going to create a couple curves using the EP curve tool. And once I get those points into place, I can turn that into a sweep mesh to create our wire. So let's start blocking this shape out.
All right, so the wires are looking good. Next up is the tape that's holding some of these objects in place. So to do this, we're gonna create a small plane. I'm gonna drag down those subdivisions down to one, and then I can start positioning those on top of my objects. So we're gonna start with those little two metal pieces that are on the side of my bottle. So we're gonna position that plane right over top of them, and then I can start extruding one of the edges to wrap it around the bottle so it looks like it's holding it into place. Now I'm not gonna add a lot of polys right now. I'm gonna keep things really low in polys and I'm just gonna extrude it to the points of contact around the bottle. So basically every corner I wrap around, I'm gonna add a small extrusion, but I'm gonna try to keep this shape in as low polys as I can. It's really gonna help me position everything into the right place. Alright, so once we have that main tape shape in place, I can go ahead and select all of those edges and add a very small bevel. And once I hit 3 on my keyboard, it's going to help retain those hard edges so it looks like the tape is wrapped around all of those objects. So we're going to do the exact same thing, but this time we're going to wrap a piece of tape around the battery pack. So let's start blocking that piece of tape out. All right, so the pieces of tape are complete. Next up is that small piece of fabric that wraps around all of these objects. So very similar to how we created the tape, we're gonna do the exact same thing for this object as well. So we're gonna create a small plane, scale that down into position, and then I can start extruding one of those edges to wrap around all of the objects. And once again, I'm gonna focus keeping things in low polys, and once that main shape is there, I can go ahead and bevel out those hard edges. So I'm just going to speed up this next part of the video since we're just repeating the exact same steps we just did.
All right, so now that those two pieces of fabric are blocked out, we're gonna go ahead and select all of those faces and I can extrude them. I wanna give them a little bit of thickness, unlike our small pieces of tape that are gonna be flat against these objects. I wanna create some sort of thickness with this fabric so it looks like it's a thicker piece of material. So once again, select all of those faces, extrude them, give it a small thickness, and I can go ahead and bevel out some of those edges. All right, so next up is creating that little piece of cloth that comes out the top of the bottle and hangs over the side. You can basically light this thing on fire and once you smash it, it'll help explode or detonate the explosive. So to do this, we're gonna create a small cylinder, scale that down into place, and then I can start extruding one of the edges to come out on the top of the bottle and droop over the side. Now once again, I'm gonna keep things in low polys and once that main shape is in place, we can go ahead and hit three on our keyboard to smooth things out. Now to help make this piece of fabric look like a cloth that's actually rolled in on itself, just to add a tiny bit more detail on the very end of the cylinder that's actually hanging outside of the bottle, we're gonna add a few caps or a few edge loops. That way I can extrude some of those faces inward so it looks like it's a piece of fabric that's rolled in on itself. We're just gonna give it the illusion like it's a piece of cloth. Now you could definitely spend a little bit more time on this piece of cloth. You could bring this into a program like ZBrush and make some really cool object and it actually looks like a realistic cloth that's folding in and has some wave effect to it. But I just wanna do this really quickly. We're gonna add some of that wave effect into the texture later on in Substance Painter. So I'm not gonna to spend too much time on this object. I just want it to look roughly like a piece of cloth that's hanging outside of the bottle. All right, so that piece of cloth is looking much better. Now really quickly before we wrap up this model, I wanna add one little small detail. I just wanna add a small object on the very end of the wires that fit into those little metal tips. All right, so that's a wrap on the modeling. Now let's quickly go over how I did those UVs. All right, so here's a model in its finished form. Now the only small change I made at the very end was at the very top of the bottle. So I wanted it to look more like the fabric was kind of broken up, like the seal was broken. So all I did was select some of those vertices and I hit B on my keyboard to enter soft select. And I can slightly just drag those up to create some sort of effect like it looked like the material was kind of peeling upwards. Other than that, I just went through and created two groups for my two textures that were applied. 
So on the very first group is the bottle texture. And that's just the whole bottle and all of the fabric and tape pieces. Now one of the things I made sure I did was straighten these UV shells, specifically this one around the lower part of the bottle where the labels are gonna go. By straightening these shells out, it's just gonna make my life a lot easier later on in Substance Painter when we start adding all those labels. So on the other group is the explosive, and that's pretty straightforward. It's just the explosive piece and all the other objects in my scene. So that's exactly how I broke this model up into these two textures with the two materials applied. So we can export this object, jump into Substance Painter, and we can start texturing. All right, so now jumping over to Substance Painter, we can go ahead and load in our FBX file from Maya. Once the model's loaded in and things are looking good, we can go over to our texture set settings, scroll down to bake mesh maps, and then we can choose our output size. So I chose 4K, you can choose whatever output size you'd like, and then I can make sure to check on that use low poly mesh as high poly mesh since we only have one mesh to work with, and then we can go ahead and bake out our textures. All right, so since we're gonna be using glass in our materials and we need the opacity, we're gonna to have to make a few small changes. So we're first gonna to go to the very top to our shader settings, and I can change our shader to alpha blending. This is gonna allow us to add an opacity channel and then we can add that see-through material into our textures. So all I need to do is scroll down to that little plus icon and we can add an opacity channel. All right, so now that we're all set up, we can start with our first texture in our texture set list, which is the bottle. So we're gonna start off with the label. Now I jumped on Google Images and found a Jack Daniels label. So I'm gonna drag that into my scene and I'm gonna set that as an alpha since it's black and white. And then I can set that to the current session. Now I just thought starting off with the label would make most sense, but you can really approach this model however you like, but we're gonna start off with these labels. So we're gonna first start off with the main black color that's on the label. So we're gonna start with a fill layer. I can set that to a black mask. And then using my different fill modes, we can actually assign that material to those specific areas where the labels are. All right, so next up was creating all of the words and the actual label itself. So to do that, we're gonna create another fill layer, and then I can assign that label alpha that we brought in at the beginning of the project, and I can assign that to the alpha on this layer. Then all I have to do is just basically paste that directly onto my UVs wherever I want those labels to go. Now, if you wanted to make your life a little bit easier, you could actually break this thing out into three different alphas, one for each side of the faces on the bottle. Now, because I didn't do that, I'm just gonna have to add a few different layers depending on which print I'm actually pasting onto my mesh. So let's go ahead and we can finish pasting all of these labels on the bottom part of my bottle. I also realized that the label doesn't wrap around the whole bottle, it's only on the three front faces, so we're just gonna remove the black material from the back face of this object. All right, so now we're just gonna repeat the same process for the top part of the labels on the neck of the bottle.
All right, label's looking good. Next up is the glass. So for our glass material, I'm using a chromatic glass I found on the Substance Source website, and I'm gonna drag that into my file and just use that in my current session. Now, if you didn't have an account with Substance Source, you could definitely just use a fill layer for this, but I'm gonna use this chromatic glass that I downloaded from the website. So I'm just gonna set that material to a black mask, and then I can assign it to my bottle object. I also didn't realize that I accidentally put some of that label on my glass, so we're quickly just gonna remove that as well. So our glass isn't quite see-through yet, and that's just because we didn't turn on our opacity channel. So let's quickly go ahead and do that. All right, so now that it's see-through, let's go ahead and tweak this color a tiny bit just to make it more of a darkish brown. Now this is a photo of a Jack Daniels bottle I'm using as a reference just for the color of the bottle. So we're gonna try to get something close to this. So we're gonna do this by adding different gradient effects. I actually really didn't know how I was gonna tackle this, but I thought by adding different gradients, we can kind of get that gold brownish look throughout the bottle, like it's kind of see-through and there's some sort of liquid that's inside of it. So what I'm gonna do is start off with a fill layer. I can assign that to a black mask and then right click and assign a fill layer. Then I can go over to one of these gradient effects and I can drag that right onto my grayscale. And then I can play around with some of these colors and sliders and slowly build up that brown sort of gold effect that this bottle has. Now I'm gonna make sure to crank up my metallic and drag down my roughness. That way I can have a really reflective sort of glass looking material. Now we're just gonna take our time and slowly build this up. So I'm gonna start off with a dark brown at the beginning and then we can start adding some nice brighter golds and different touches onto it. Now this is definitely one of those materials that the longer you spend working on it, the better it's gonna look, especially because of all these different gradients and it's really gonna depend on the lighting source you have as well but we're just gonna try to do this relatively quickly. So let's go ahead and start adding a few different layers and we can start adding different gradient effects to this object.
All right, so as you can see, I've slowly been adding on different fill layers and different gradient effects to the bottle. Now, I kept doing this for the next few minutes, and to be honest, I spent a little bit more time than I wanted to. I just kind of had tunnel vision and just kept going at this texture. So rather than making you watch me fiddle around with all these settings, I'm just gonna fast forward to where I had it more in a finalized state, and I'll quickly go over exactly what I did. All right, so here's a model after I was done playing around with it a tiny bit and I had that texture a little bit more closer to what I had in mind. So what I'm gonna do is just hide all of these layers and I'll quickly show you exactly what I did. So I started off with that main chromatic glass texture. I added on one fill layer to make it a little darker and I slowly added on these brighter tones and different gradient effects, similar to what we were doing previously, but this is just showing you exactly how I did that. So I wanted it looking a little bit more gold on the outside and a little darker in the middle and on the bottom. So now if I jump into the renderer, you can see how it's looking a little bit closer to that reference photo I was going for. And now you could definitely spend a little bit more time just continue going at it and it would slowly get a little bit better, but it's good enough for now. So let's just move on to a few other things. So next up was adding that engraved Jack Daniels into the bottle itself. So I jumped into Photoshop and just wrote Jack Daniels with a built-in font. It's not exactly the one that's on the bottle, but it's close enough. And all I did was drag that into my file and set that as an alpha. And then I can set that to the current session. Now, very similar to how we did the Jack Daniels labels, we're gonna do the exact same thing by adding another fill layer, but this time I'm gonna turn off all of the other channels so we only have a height channel applied. We only wanna have that bump into the glass. I don't really want any of the other settings, so we can turn everything else off. And then all I have to do is drag that image onto my alpha, and then depending on how much that slider on my height channel is moved, I can have a nice little bump or engraving effect on my bottle. So let's go ahead and paste this Jack Daniels wording around my bottle. So next up, I thought it'd be cool to add a little folding or wrinkle effect on that top packaging of my bottle. Now normally this packaging is nice and tight and there probably wouldn't be a lot of wrinkles in it, but I thought it would just bring up that cool factor just a little bit if I added it on that top part. So what we're gonna do is take advantage of those smart materials. I'm gonna use that flannel material that comes with Substance Painter. We're gonna take that folding effect that's in there and I'm gonna paste that onto my object. Now I can delete the other flannel material folder that I have, so I only have that folding effect. I can put that in its own folder, right click, set it to a black mask, and I can assign it to that specific black mesh that's on the top of my bottle. And then all I have to do is just tweak some of those settings and sliders depending on how much of a folding or wrinkle effect I wanna have. I just wanna make it very subtle, just to add a little bit of something extra onto the model. All right, so next up was the duct tape. Now, I'm just gonna be using another material off of the Substance Source website. I use this in a lot of these projects that I do. I just saved it into my library, but we're just gonna set that to those meshes in my scene. All right, so next up are those two fabric meshes that are holding all of these objects together. So we're just gonna use the built-in textures that come with Substance. So we're just gonna go over to the materials folder and I'm gonna drag on that fabric knitted material to those meshes. And lastly was that cloth that's hanging out the top. And weirdly enough, I decided to use a paper material for this. I just thought it would look a little bit different rather than your typical fabric material that I always use or the ones that come with Substance Painter. So we're just gonna go over to one of these paper materials and I'm gonna drag that directly onto that mesh as well. Now we're gonna come back to these and add some nice dirt and grunge later on, but we just wanna fill these with a base material for now and then we can come back to it later. All right, so now that we have materials applied to all of our meshes in our first texture in our texture set list, we're moving on to the second, which is all of the components on the explosive. So for this, we're just gonna keep reusing some smart materials that come with Substance Painter. So we're just gonna go through various different materials and apply them to all of the other meshes in our scene. 
So I'm just gonna let this next part play out as we're just gonna be going through different materials. But let's go ahead and fill in all of these empty objects and then we can start adding in some more details. All right, so the materials are coming together and we're almost there. But as soon as I tried assigning a material to these wires, I noticed how all of the UVs were overlapping. I forgot to give them their own individual space so we can't have different colors on different wires. So I'm really quickly gonna jump back into Maya. I can just move these UVs around so they're taking up their own space and I can bring the model back into Substance and we can rebake those textures and continue texturing the model. All right, so all of our meshes now have materials applied, so now we can start adding in a few extra details. So I jumped on Google Images and I found different stickers and labels that I wanna paste on top of this explosive device. 
So I thought a tiny little smiley face would be funny right by the trigger where the switch is to turn it on and off, and also a few different labels of these mechanical components. So I'm going to save those images as JPEGs or PNGs, drag those files in and set them as textures into the current session. And then all I have to do is using the projection tool, I can just project these images right onto my model wherever I'd like them. Now all I'm going to do is make sure that the height slider is slightly brought up, that way there's a nice bump on these stickers so it looks like it's actually not completely flat with the mesh and there's a little bump on it so it's acting like its own separate object. And then I can go over and start pasting these different graphics and stickers on top of the model. So let's go ahead and start doing this so we can add a little bit more detail. All right, so stickers are applied and the model's looking good, but it's looking a little bit too clean. So we're gonna just dirty this thing up a little bit. So we're gonna do this by adding a few fill layers. I can go over to my masks tab and drag on whatever masking or grunge effect I'd like right onto my fill layer. Then all I have to do is drag around the sliders depending on how much dirt and grunge I wanna show and we can dirty these objects up a little bit. Now, in my opinion, it's important not to go crazy here. It's really tempting just to throw a lot of dirt and mud and scratches and different grunge effects on top of it, but things can quickly go out of control, and I find you get the best results by slowly adding them and layering these different effects very gradually. A good way to think about it is less is more. So we're just gonna gradually start adding these effects and we can start building them up and layering them on top of each other. And here, I'm just adjusting that top label. I thought it was sitting a little bit low on the neck, so we're just chopping off some of that black material and I'm just gonna move up that logo a little bit.
mean, I always like to add my own personal touch by adding a PR for poly render somewhere on these models. So we're really quickly gonna add a tiny little initial on the very top. Alright, so now that the model's basically wrapped up, we're gonna spend the next little bit of the video just tweaking a few things and adjusting some of the settings. Alright, so that's basically everything. I was basically wrapping up the model here and I thought we were done, but after I shut off the camera and I jumped into the renderer, I still thought things were looking a little bit too clean. So I really quickly added a few other dirt and grunge effects, similar to how we were doing before with different fill layers and masking effects, and I just made things a little bit more dirty. So let's just really quickly go over exactly what I did, and then we can wrap this whole video up. All right, so here's the model once I was done adding those dirt and grunge effects. Now I'm gonna quickly go over exactly what I did. I only added about four or five different layers. So I'm gonna turn them all off so we can see exactly what those do. So this very first layer is a lot of dirt and grunge around the label, especially between the bottle and the explosive device. I just wanted to make it a little bit more dirty, looking a little bit too clean. Now the second folder is empty. There's actually nothing in here, so I can just remove this one. So the second folder is just some more dirt and grunge around those fabric straps that are holding all these objects together. And then this top folder is just on that piece of cloth that's hanging out of the bottle. I just added a lot of dirt and wrinkle effects just to make it look a lot more grungy. So if I just turn it on and off here, you can see exactly how it's affecting it. I also thought it would be interesting to add a few more personal touches to the model. So I quickly wrote just red line here with a little arrow pointing to where the red line connects just to add some little personal touch to try to make it, like I said, a little bit more interesting to look at. But that's basically everything. So now I'll quickly jump into the renderer to show you how the model's looking. I can play around with those environmental maps depending on what lighting source I'd like. I ended up going with one of those studio lights like I usually do, and then I just rendered out a few images. But that's basically the whole texturing and modeling process that I did to create this explosive device. I really hope you guys enjoyed this week's video. Thanks so much for tuning in. Give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to see more weekly 3D content. All right, I'll catch you guys in the next one.